You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Friday, March 27th. Uh, exciting story to share with you today about um, how one of our Concordia University, Wisconsin uh, departments, uh, the students and, the, and the, the faculty there are stepping up to serve in this time. It's a really exciting story. I can't wait to share it with you today. And also we continue our conversations for Camp Week as well as we head to Wall Camp in uh, Northern Illinois. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for supporting the Coffee Hour. Find out more about them at cuw.edu. We have a great story from Concordia University, Wisconsin as well. Joining us today, Dr. Dan Sem, Dean of the Batterman School of Business at Concordia University, Wisconsin. Dr. Sem, thanks for being our guest on the Coffee Hour today. Oh, happy to be here. Thanks. Tell us about the, the Makerspace Lab at Concordia University, Wisconsin. Sure. Yeah, it's uh, something that we built over the summer. We Actually, we're in a new building called the Robert W. Plaster Free Enterprise Center. It's for housing the School of Business. And in there, we built a, a maker space. We have it next to what we call a collaboratorium for students to collaborate on new ideas, maybe business startup ideas. And the maker space itself is where you prototype your ideas. You kind of make them a reality. So so there's quite a bit of stuff in there. But the main thing is, is there's a bay of around 30 3D printers so we can prototype uh, any idea that somebody comes up with. It was the chair of our computer science department, Mike Glipman, who who thought of that. Um, at the time, I was wondering, why on earth do you need 30 3D printers? But now <laughs> it seems why. maybe God had a plan. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds super awesome. I kind of want to go uh, take my home studio there. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like <laughs> such a creative place to be, to just have all it's these ideas. Space. So cool. Uh, how does, so you have 30, 3D printers, how does that compare to what uh, a typical university with this kind of setup would have? I think, I mean, in terms of the, the number and the throughput, it's kind of unique. I would say it's larger, larger in terms of print volume of stuff that we can print than anything that I know of in a nonprofit in Southeast Wisconsin. Now, other universities, maybe they have pretty sophisticated, expensive prototyping and 3D printing capability, but they usually have like mm -hmm one of these, two of these, they don't mm -hmm. have sort of the quantity. So so that's where I think we're gonna be able to help with what we're doing is, is the throughput. And we actually got a really nice donation from somebody in our Lutheran community uh, that's allowing us to double the capacity now. So what we are able to do now, we'll be able to, to double. So. Wow, so tell us about uh, how these 3D printers are actually being used now. So right now, and we're working with a bunch of collaborators in Southeast Wisconsin, clinicians, companies, and also the University of UW-Milwaukee Engineering Department to come up with the best design. So we've been through maybe three or four different designs so far, and we hope to lock in this week. So we are printing on the order of 70 to 90 masks a day but we're not at the final design yet. So I, I think what's gonna happen is we'll lock in this weekend and then we'll start, I hope production next week of masks that are actually gonna be used by first responders and, and healthcare workers. The ones we have so far, and we have quite a few, are sort of earlier designs. So I think we'll save them. If the shortage is really bad, then maybe we can, we can use those too. But we we'll hope to have sort of the ideal design next week, Monday, I hope. And then at that point, we'll be able to do about 500 a week. And maybe with this doubling of our capacity of a thousand per week, I hope. So. Wow. wow. Tell us about that process of, of a design and, and creating, uh, you know, developing that design for masks to be used by healthcare workers. Yeah. Um, and I don't want people to be worried by this, but it's uh, I'm an entrepreneur and an innovator, and I would describe it as organized chaos right now. <laughs> <laughs> but we are gonna get into sort of a systematic um, streamlining and, and quality control and whatnot. But, you know, we are coming up with our designs. We have uh, uh, Dr. Lippman, as well as a, a really talented computer science student, Blade, um, is, is each day on CAD software, it's sort of tweaking uh, the design um, and people all over the country are doing what we're doing. It's 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 like percolating uh, in different cities, and uh, I would say a really great strong effort is out of UW Milwaukee as well, and they have a number of designs that they're working on, and you know it's it's crazy stuff. Like we got to have a seal for the mask, so so I, I made a trip to Walmart to get some 
window sealer <laughs> to wrap around and um, to, to make the seal between the plastic and your face because it's got to be airtight. But really, really important is to be talking to the end users. So, so we've been visiting, uh, especially Children's Hospital in Wisconsin, talking with their chief nursing officer, their safety, their OSHA person, their infectious disease person, and, and a number of surgeons. Um, and trying them out and letting us know what they like, what they don't like, what the specifications need to be. So that's been at Children's and then also at Medical College Freight or uh, two, two of our major healthcare providers in, in the region. And so we're, we're doing that kind of back and forth. So, you know, every couple of days we have something new and we show it to them and they try it on and they say, well, this doesn't work for this reason or that reason. So I think it's the usual sort of engineering design process, but accelerated by 10. <laughs> <laughs> who are some of the other partners that you're able to work with? You mentioned the Children's Hospital and doctors. Who are some of the, the other people that, that are bring, the, you're bringing into this project? Yeah, the, the main ones um, are UW-Milwaukee Children's and, and Freighter Medical College. But there's a broader initiative and, and also universities like Marquette and Milwaukee School of Engineering. But there's also a group of companies uh, that are involved, HUSCO and uh, uh, Briggs and Stratton, who, what they're looking to do is once there's a good design, they're gonna retool their manufacturing so that they can crank out maybe thousands of these in a day. So, so they're part of it, kind of overseeing a larger sort of consortium and we're a subset of that. I view what we're doing as kind of filling the gap until they're able to get retooled and production going and get the, you know, the real supply chain up and running. But that could be 10 days or, or two, three weeks don't know for sure. So, so until then, we're going to try to to fill fill the need. And then there's filter companies, and the filters that you need are are called for N95 is what it's called. Even you know HVAC, air conditioning, vacuum bag filters, uh, all kinds of different sources of filters. So, a lot of the kind of research that we're doing with others is is trying to just decide the best filters to put inside the mask so that you you have uh, adequate filtering capacity. Yeah, um, who are who are the the stu are there are, are these students that are that are helping with this process at CUW or who are the people at CUW that are actually involved in this project? Yeah, and that's a tricky thing because you know our campus is shut down and there's safety mm -hmm. concerns. So, so there are some students who have gotten special permission to work on this um, in the computer science department. Blade is 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 one of the students that I mentioned, but there are others. And so, you know, they just have to be careful about social distancing and, and hygiene and, and stuff like that. And we're, we're watching that carefully. But I would say, you know, here it's our computer science students. We do have our marketing uh, PR teacher who is involving her students in, in sort of uh, this project as well. I'm thinking of getting my e-commerce students involved in creating a website where we can compile best practice information. So that's on our end. In terms of our partners, uh, Medical College of Wisconsin has their medical students who have volunteered to help with the assembly of the mask. So we have a, a clean room uh, uh, at a, another of our locations where the two students will go in there and they'll be involved in, in assembling the mask uh, once we're into production, which I really hope is going to be next week. You mentioned earlier how there are others uh, around the country who are starting to uh, to do the the same thing or similar work. Um, how can how can others get involved and and be helpful? How can they be a part of the projects that you're working on? Yeah, and we have some of this on uh, on a website uh, that we have devoted to this uh, for our initiative. Um, there's a GoFundMe page to help pay for the materials that we're using. But uh, almost just as important, or maybe more important, is we're looking to crowdsource the 3D printing um, for our region. So, uh, and we're working with Milwaukee Police Department. So they they would so people that volunteer to 3D print for us, uh, we would deliver them the materials that we purchase, and then when they're done, we would pick them up. Um, but people in other cities are probably organizing the same kind of efforts that we're doing. They can check the hashtag uh, hack the pandemic. Um, so you can, through that hashtag, you can see the initiatives that are going on all over the country. Um, Johns Hopkins, for instance, has a, a file you can download to 3D print their version of the N95 respirator mask. We will provide our version of the N95 respirator mask once we've sort of finalized the design. 
that'll be something that you can get to off of our website as well once uh, once we lock that in hopefully next week um yeah but this is an amazing thing and it's you know uh spawning in every city across the country what we're doing so it's uh uh, it's it's the 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 pandemic is a scary thing um and a challenging thing but it's 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 i think it's good for people's psyche and their spirits to know that they can get involved in in some way and be part of this it's it's depressing just to sort of always see the the negative statistics and you know it, it's real concern but you feel helpless in this way to to kind of move move beyond that as well so it's very encouraging to see uh to see students and and the uh, the university um, really using the gifts that they have given have been given to uh, to serve their neighbor, especially in a time like this, that's that's very encouraging um, to you and the students and the volunteers and those who are working together with uh, CUW to to really make this happen in order to provide these masks, these uh, you know this really important equipment during this time. Or much appreciation. And thank you so much for your time today, sharing this story with us. Uh, we'll provide the link to uh, the pages that you mentioned as well. In the program notes today and on the podcast uh, and uh, anything else that uh, that we need to know so that we can help keep supporting this work no I think we covered everything it's it's and for us it's all about living our mission you know serving Christ in the church in the world so and I think you know everybody across the country is doing their version of that which is wonderful and inspiring dr. Dan Sam Dean of the Batterman School of Business at Concordia University Wisconsin thanks so much for being our guest today dr. Sam Thanks. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth.